I'm going to go on to um, giving the floor to Mr. Raf Hakim, who is a very prominent uh, uh, Minister of Parliament. He has got at least 27 years of experience in politics. He also worked as a, he has got a legal background. He worked in the chambers of a prominent uh, uh, presidential council, particularly dealing with cases of um, uh, fundamental rights. And he also is involved in many activities, including uh, publications with regards to uh, democracy and human rights. Um, rather, um, given the time to uh, Mr. Hakim in terms of your short of time, the floor is over to you, Mr. Hakim. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, may I not uh, traverse the same ground that has been uh, now amply uh, laid out by the our eloquent uh, Dr. Jan Dathilaka about the current context in which the PTA is being abused. Uh, now, coming back to the, uh, the PTA itself, let us start with the definition of terrorism uh, in uh, section two of the act, which is um, thought of as a very overbroad definition, which uh, allows for its abuse in uh, uh, no small measure. We have seen over the years how this regressive piece of legislation has not only uh, affected personal liberty, it has now gone on to in its new uh, uh, incarnation with the Pranil Vikramasinghe administration um, to uh, restrain uh, civil liberties and to prevent uh, demonstrations and, and the like, as has been already amply demonstrated by Dr. Jan Dayatilaka. But let me also argue that leave alone restricting personal liberty uh, the very core purpose of the PISA legislation to prevent terrorism, this doesn't get anywhere near that as well because of its continued abuse and the, uh, the corruption that entails the use of this legislation in a very repressive manner to incarcerate innocent individuals because of the overbroad manner in which the definition itself is allowed to be abused by the perpetrators. Now, now, I think I would rather lay the blame at the door of both the police department and also the attorney general's department, both of whom have to also share the blame because I have been in several discussions and select committees and other um, forums looking at uh, reforming this law or changing this uh, regressive piece of legislation. We have gone on with a temporary legislation that came in almost 40 years ago. And uh, um, in the entire parliamentary career, I have come across several occasions in which this has been, there have been attempts to uh, reform. But then um, uh, wh what I must say is whatever domestic pressure never have a, regime ever listened or uh, agreed with uh, uh, any uh, domestic agency which wanted change. Finally, they, they caved in only because of economic reasons, particularly with uh, concessions like the GSP plus by the European Union. And uh, even the last attempt at uh, doing some cosmetic changes materialized because they wanted to save uh, the GSP plus concession that was obtained by the previous administration of the, uh, the so-called uh, uh, Ranil Vikram Singh uh, Sirisena administration of which I was also a member of the cabinet. Uh, I must say the, the, uh, the Counter-Terrorism Act, which was brought in as, a, uh, uh, as an alternative to the PTA was dismissed by the um, former regime of Gotabaya, because ideologically they were uh, not willing to uh, tinker with the PTA in any way. But then because of pressure, they, they brought in some cosmetic changes, which already are very superficial because other legislation and uh, um, things like the constitutional provisions uh, 
um, other legislative provisions which have enabled uh, access to attorneys at law by uh, uh, suspects and uh, uh, and reducing the period of detention from 18 uh, months to 12 months. These are all very cosmetic, superficial changes which had gone nowhere near the necessary um, um, good practices that we need to adapt from other experiences in the rest of the uh, jurisdictions. So uh, all in all, now I also would like to focus on one other aspect of it, an extension from this, particularly after the Easter Sunday attacks. Now the regime has got on to um, use the um, United Nations Act and the enabling provision there to use this UN Security Council resolutions to uh, gasset certain persons and uh, institutions as proscribed people has been used willy-nilly to now gasset uh, about 150 uh, Muslim uh, people, most of them youth, who have very uh, seminal or very minor involvement with uh, the activities of Zahra. Now, what has, what has happened is use of uh, this particular avenue to proscribe individuals and uh, um, uh, agencies uh, by recourse to uh, this provision without any due process, without hearing them out, without giving them any substantial reason for as to why their names are being proscribed. Most of them have been uh, are out on bail, but now they are now being uh, gazetted and proscribed individuals without uh, any proper due process. And this has stigmatized them. It has virtually um, made their entire families uh, traumatized. So, so they, they, this resort to this, and particularly this particular uh, UN uh, uh, Security Council resolution talk of direct funding for international terrorist organizations like uh, originally it was Al Qaeda, subsequently it was uh, um, the ISIL and various other organizations. So they are now directly linking these individuals uh, as if they were involved with terrorist financing. Whereas we already have other uh, local legislation in keeping with uh, UN conventions uh, to deal with terrorist financing. But here, because there is no proper uh, vetting process, the uh, competent uh, authority that is now the defense ministry, it should have been the foreign ministry. It has been uh, given away from the foreign ministry of the defense ministry. And Mr. Kamal Gunaratna, General Kamal Gunaratna, who is actually the chip of the old bloc, when it comes to the earlier regime, who uh, is now supervising this particular event, has, has seriously jeopardized the uh, uh, individual liberty of uh, hundreds of young people uh, for uh, very uh, puerile reasons. And I, I, I challenge them to, to come out with the reasons and then lay out why such draconian uh, measure has to be brought against these young people. So this is one issue which I would like to highlight. Uh, of course, uh, in dealing with uh, the, the changes that have already been brought, and then also talking about the proposed National Security Act, as uh, uh, eloquently ex explained by Dr. Diane a while ago. Now, this again, we took it up with uh, Ambassador Samantha Power, who was here as her, on her role as, as the uh, um, administrator of the uh, US aid, when we had the opportunity to talk to her, we pointed out the, uh, the earlier Counterterrorism Act too, uh, in our opinion, uh, fell short of uh, the uh, good practices that have been adopted uh, elsewhere in the international world to, um, uh, to counter terrorism. So, uh, but the, the stock reply of uh, the current president to the administrator as she had raised this issue was to say, well, we have this uh, counterterrorism act um, uh, in the back burner, let us bring it in and then uh, do away with the PTA. 
So uh, I must um, hasten here to say that uh, the Counterterrorism Act as well does not um, uh, uh, go anywhere near the necessary safeguards that should be uh, brought in. Because um, uh, the way in which this enables endemic corruption among the security agencies, particularly, I know of several cases where senior officers have been uh, enriching themselves by um, um, uh, willy-nilly arresting people and putting them under uh, detention orders and calling family members and demanding uh, or in, in, indirectly um, wanting um, uh, gratifications. These things have happened. Several, uh, there are several court cases where um, issues relating to torture and forced confessions have been obtained. And what is worse in this uh, law is that confessions are admissible. And I, I know Jeff and people will go on to explain the legal, legal ramifications involved um, uh, with this particular regressive piece of legislation, uh, the back of which we must see as soon as possible. We need to um, keep the pressure and uh, no pressure will work domestically except to bring in the necessary international pressure. And already I think the heat is on in Geneva and I hope that the international community uh, will not um, um, shy away from holding the government to account on its current uh, abusive behavior in uh, trying to curtail these uh, peaceful demonstrators through uh, use of this draconian piece of law. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hakim. Um, very, very valuable uh, points. Um, the main points I got out of this is the government, the previous regimes trying to redefine the terrorism well outside the scope of international definition of terrorism. That mainly focuses focusing on um, human rights and also certain religious groups, minorities, as well as political opponents. The second point you made was mainly about um, what these reforms, which the previous government was suggesting, had no real meanings. They were face wash uh, to the international community, especially the EU uh, trade deals, GSP plus, uh, and also um, you did make a very important point about pressurizing the government in terms of policy change and change to the PTA or uh, repeal it only with the pressures from the international financial support and pressures. Uh, and the third point you made is um, the importance of the PTA to be reformed or repealed purely because of uh, the extent to what that is taken by the, uh, the law enforcement authorities, individuals of higher positions for their own uh, individual benefit in terms of uh, pressurizing the families for financial gain or, or any um, other form of gain for individuals. Uh, these are very important for the inter international community to know. And I'm sure that there are reports which is being published and widely available by the Human Rights Watch, as well as the Amnesty International, highlighting the similar points what you have brought uh, to this table. Thank you very much.